Hello, welcome viewers to this virtual learning. We also welcome uh, new viewers to our channel. Please, if you are new, subscribe this channel, share with your friends, and hit the notification button so you'll be alerted of all our new videos. This lesson three on probability, and we'll be talking. I'll be talking to you about sample space diagram. Sample space diagram is used to list combined outcomes of two independent events. The outcomes in each event should be equally likely. The two events must be mutually exclusive. That means the occurrence of one event does not exclude the occurrence of the other. Examples, if you have two dice and you roll, it's possible both could land on six phase up or both could land on one phase up. So the outcome of one shouldn't affect the outcome of the other. And sample space is the list of all the possible outcome of an event. Example, sample space of rolling a die. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so this is just a brief introduction of things that I'm going to be using in explaining what the sample space diagram is all about and work out probability. Let's look at our first example. We have a die and a coin. As you can see, we have different combination. We have three and tail. So we could have so many combination: four and a tail, three and a head. 5 and a head, 3 and a tail. There are so many combinations. Now, it's best to use sample space to help you understand all the possible outcome. And we are supposed to use sample space to list the outcome and work out probability for getting a head and an even number and getting a tail and a square number. Now, this is how you do it. This is your sample space for a coin. It could be a head. Or it could be a tail. Then this is your sample space for a die. There's nothing in this box, so always leave this blank. All we do is to pair it. So it could be one with a head, one with a tail, two with a head, two with a tail, and so on. We just pair them. So you now now. 12 possible outcomes. The outcomes are the ones in the box, not the ones at the edges. You don't count them. Those are sample space. So you can see there are 12 possible outcomes. So your answer should be out of 12. So getting a head and an even number. There are three options out of 12. So it's 3 over 12. A tail and a square number. You must know what your square numbers are. 1, 4, nine nine we've, we've gone past six so it's one and four these are the only square numbers we want a tail with it so it's only two out of twelve let's look at the next example here we have two dice so you're supposed to list the outcome of the two dice and use it to work out these probabilities. So, the same way, 1 and 1, 1 and 2, and so on. So that will be the first, 2, 1, 2, 2, and so on. So, you have 36 possible outcomes. So, if you want to work out all odd numbers, we want all to be odd numbers. You need to look carefully. These are the possible outcomes for odd numbers and if you have to count them that will be 9 out of 36 in case you did not count 9 out of 36 then we have probability that they will all show the same numbers count the same numbers so the answer will be 6 out of 36 all numbers more than 4 so we want all the numbers showing should be more than 4 so the options so it's four out of 36 then we have two on blue and odd number on red two on blue odd number on red this is specified two on blue odd number on red so there are three options so it's three out of 36. now let's look at where you have to 
design your own sample space diagram. So here we have Joseph span these two first pinners. So Joseph span these two first pinners at the same time. So one is circular and one is a square spinner. But the condition is that the two numbers span are added together. So here we are not just listing, we're going to add the outcomes. Let's first see how to draw the sample space before we answer these questions. So we have the square spin on this side, we have the circular spin on this side, then here we put a plus because we are going to add. Now you see the first outcome is 0 and 1, but we are not supposed to less, we are supposed to add 0 and 1. So we, this 0 and 1, we're going to add it, 0 plus 1 is 1. The next one is 0 and 2, we're going to add it, and so on. Here is 1 and 1, but we're going to add 1 plus 1. That will give us 2, and so on. So this, these are the outcomes, and there are 16 possible outcomes. Now we want probability that it will land on a total of 1. Total of 1. It's only one possible way. That is 1 out of 16. What about the total is less than 1? Less than 4? Less than 4. These are all less than 4. And if you count them, there are 6. So 6 out of 16. More than or equal to 6. So we have 6 or more. 6 or more is 3. Which means 3 out of 16. A prime number. You must know your prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So if you know your prime number, you'll be able to, to pick the right prime numbers. So 2, 3, 5, and 7. And count how many are there? 9. So it's 9 out of 16. Now we're going to look at an exam question. Take your time to read the question. Okay, Papako designed a game of rolling two dice. The two numbers rolled are added together. You win a pound if the total is 7, 9, or 11. To play the game, you need to pay 50p. Suppose 60 people play the game. Work out if Paco makes a profit or a loss. Okay, so let's start. We have our sample speed diagram given to us. If it is not, we know how to do it, similar to the one we did in previous slide. You need to know how to build your own sample speed diagram. Now, to win, you must score 7, 9, and 11. So let's work out probability of winning. Now before that, find out how much money you have. If 60 people are playing, 60 people, each one is going to give you 50p. So 50 times 60 is 30 pounds. Now, to win, you must score 7, 9, and 11. So probability of winning, 7, 9, or 11, that will give us 12 out of 36. So the 12 of 36 chance that somebody will win. This is the probability of winning. If 60 people are playing, think of relative frequency or the experimental probability. Similar. If the chance of winning is 12 out of 36 and 60 people are playing, how many do you expect to win? You multiply probability by the number of people who are playing. So we expect 20 people to win. Each one will be given one pound when they win. So 20 people, it will cost you 20 pounds. So you're going to pay them 20 pounds for winning. Now, your profit is your revenue minus the amount that you pay out. You got 30 pounds from 60 people playing and you pay 20 pounds off to the 20 people who won. So your revenue minus paid out will be 30 minus 20, and you now have 10 pounds profit. So you have 10 pounds profit. So Papako is going to have 10 pounds profit from 60 people. And that brings us to the end of our lesson on sample space diagram. Look forward to lesson 5 on probability tree diagram. Simple tree diagram. Then we'll do the last lesson on harder tree diagrams and probability without using probability tree diagram.
Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, share with your friends. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.